Hey everybody, Danny Ward here. Thanks for joining us. How do you hold the golf club? Why is it even important? Well, look, the purpose of a grip is to basically help you generate speed. If you don't have the correct grip, it's very hard to generate power. It's also designed, obviously, to put pressure on this golf ball and, more importantly, to control where this club face is. If you're finding that you've got lots of curvature on your golf ball, do you know what? A simple change in your grip could make a huge difference to your accuracy and your power. Now, I know that a grip change isn't gonna affect everybody and, and massively transform everybody's game, but do you know what? I've certainly found that on the lesson T, simple changes to people's grip makes a huge difference to their game. Now, in this week's golf lesson, I'm gonna share with you exactly how I recommend you holding the, the golf club so it's consistent, powerful, and a certain type of grip pressure that really helps you swing nice and effortlessly as well. So that's what we're gonna cover in this week's golf lesson. Now before I do, if you're new to the channel, this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button, next subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, you do not have to remember a thing. I'll put a downloadable, completely free practice plan in the description box below, showing you step by step exactly how to do this. So, let's get started. The very first thing you're gonna to need to learn before we even hold on to the golf club is have you got the club face straight in the first place? I see this as number one fault initially. People hold the golf club, they work it so hard on the grip, meanwhile this club face is kind of aimed over here. And they go, yeah, I've got the good grip, and then without realizing they're setting up and the club is angled in the wrong place, right? So the first thing you wanna do is, is put the club nice and straight. And there's a few things, I'm used to this. So, I, I get this right pretty much most of the time. I use pretty standard grips, but if straightness or accuracy is, uh, in, the, in lining up is difficult for you, what you can do is you can get yourself some grips that actually have alignment aids on them. Look, this is a Callaway uh, wedge that I use that has a little line here. Now, that line, if that line is pointing on top of the grip, that shows me that that club face is completely straight. If I turn that line and point it over here, I know without even looking at the club face that that club face is pointed incorrectly. Again, if it's pointing over here, I know that that club face is pointing incorrectly. So having alignment aids on the grip is a great place to start if lining up the club face for you is a little bit tricky, all right? So that is step number one. Once you've done that, we can get straight into putting those hands on the golf club. So let's go into power. We want power. To get power on the golf club, you need to make sure that you've got hold of that golf club. Here's the number one thing I see with golfers. They have a grip that is way too palmy. The club, the club is too high up in the palm of the, uh, the hand here. It needs to be in the fingers. Why? If it's in the fingers of the hand here, I have got hold of it. That means when I'm generating a lot of speed, I'm gonna be able to hold onto this golf club and generate that power. Up here, I'm not gonna be able to. The other thing is this, when you grips too high in your palm, it provides, you have to hold onto it much, much tighter because you don't really have hold of the club. That creates tension in the arm, it's gonna lose a lot of speed. So, I put a guideline here as to where the club needs to go in the crux of the index finger here and it runs up to the base of the little finger here, right? So it's in this position here. That's where we wanna run it. Now let me show you, show you now exactly how you go about doing this and putting it on the club each and every single time. So, simple way to start with, you can simply let your arms hang down naturally and your arms here will just hang naturally inwards. If you put the club down on the ground, where the ball position would be, angle the club so it's opposite inside left thigh and then simply bring the hand in very naturally from the side here. When you do that, you'll have a natural angle of that hand and it's likely to be in that Great position there. That's a simple way of doing it. Do not make this mistake, which I see a hell of a lot. Golfers go, oh, daddy says I've got to put it in this, on this line here. So they, what they do, they twist the hand, put it on the line like this, then they grip it. What do you notice about that hand now? It's angled over this side. If I open that hand up, what's happened to it? It's facing almost you, isn't it, right? We want that hand naturally here. So what you wanna do is, is you wanna get the feel of where this hand goes, not by looking at it, but by feeling it. Bring it in from the side, feel that crux. So another great way to do this is to put the club in your index finger of your left hand here, or your lead hand, and notice there's two pads. Rest the, the club, you should be able to hold the club up in this index finger and the bottom pad here, not the top pad, you should be able to do that. If you can do that, 
then close your grip hand here like this, you'll know you'll have a perfect grip with your lead hand. Your checkpoint here is, is that when you, you're, you're between the thumb and the forefinger, it forms like, you see this little line I've got here? That line here wants to point towards your trail shoulder. If you have a weak grip and the, and the club is too much in the palm and it's round here, look, the line's over here somewhere. It's pointing towards our lead shoulder. This is the weak position. We call it weak because it leads to weak shots and often a weak slice. Get that line there pointing towards that trail shoulder. Once you've done that, another angle here, look, you can see here, look, that line here would point towards the shoulder. This one would point to that shoulder. Get it into those fingers wrapped around there. Right, double check your face. Once you've done that, now simply put the bottom hand on. Really, really simply. So take your bottom hand, nice and relaxed again. You could, if you want, you could just simply bring it in from the side. Again, check points here. It wants to be in your fingers, along the uh, line of your fingers here. Just bring it in from the side. Don't make the mistake I see with some people do, making. They angle the hand, put it in the fingers, then they grip it. What do you notice? The palm is facing where? Upwards. It should naturally face slightly downwards in the fingers there. And you'll notice there, I, again, it's in the crooks look of my index finger here, wrapped around. And it's forming another line which points towards my trail shoulder. Nothing more complicated than that. Question is, you've probably seen people join their hands. Now, before we get into that, you may be doing this and thinking, whew, this feels a bit uncomfortable. It really is sometimes. Sometimes you can hold a club and it just feels awkward, particularly if you've been playing the game quite a while, you got used to your grip. So bear in mind, just grab a club sometimes, sit on your couch, hold it, get used to it, and just play around with it. Get comfortable. Within a few hours, it will start to feel much, much more normal. Now, Looking at the other side of the grip here, you'll see I use what's called an overlap grip, where basically you have a few alternatives. You can bring the hands together and literally have it more baseball here, uh, baseball grip, baseball, <laughs> baseball grip here, where they simply just go like this, or you can join them together. I sometimes piggyback or do an overlap grip where my little finger sits over the top of my index finger. You have an interlock grip where the little finger interlocks with the index finger of the top hand. You can do whatever you choose to do. It doesn't really matter as long as you start to feel comfortable. Some people love the baseball, some people love the overlap, some people love interlock. I don't mind as long as you have the club, hands on that golf club in a nice neutral fashion, you're set up to win, right? So one little trick here that sometimes people miss. You've got your grip set up, but you slice it a little bit, right, still. Watch this. Make sure when you're doing it, this trail arm here is just angled inwards. You want to put pressure on this ball. So many people who are slicing it are doing this. This arm is in this position, right? Watch this. Angle it this way. This way here. When you're putting on. So the top hand is still is angled over the top, but the arm itself is slightly angled underneath. This really helps you look square that face, straighten that face, put pressure on that golf ball and really get a strong impact. Very different to this. So watch out for that, that little tweak there really, really helps. And finally, grip pressure. How hard should you grip the golf club? Big, big question. We've used analogies before like, imagine you're holding a young bird in your hands. These are all really good because you don't want to crush the bird, but you just want to kind of look after it. Another one would be like holding a tube of toothpaste. Hold it firm enough that the toothpaste just kind of comes out, but doesn't flood out. Well, all of these analogies are really about learning to kind of let go of the club head. But you don't want to be like Mr. Spaghetti. So you just find a pressure that allows you to swing freely, but at the same time, give yourself a little bit of control on the golf club. So let's just summarize what we've done there. Nice and simply, you want to get the club face straight to start with. You want to make sure that you're in a powerful position. Your arms are kind of turned inwards here. You've got to get in the fingers. Why? Because the fingers are where you're going to be holding this golf club so that you can deliver power into the back of that golf ball. Checkpoints for this, we said. Line here pointing towards this trail shoulder. You should be able to see at least two to three knuckles. I put a few dots on here on the top of my hand to give myself this guide, right? That's your bottom hand. Different ways to doing it, you can draw a line across your fingers here from the crooks of that finger into the base to hold it. 
You can then use this exercise here where you've got your top pad, your bottom pad, just simply use the bottom pad here. You should be able to lift the entire golf club up here and hold it. If you do, you're away in that, uh, that lead hand. Trail uh, bottom hand, simply just put it along the finger line here, wrap it around and away you go. Grip pressure, allow it to flow. If you're gripping on for dear life, and you can do when you start this because obviously it feels new, just start to kind of relax it a little bit. Not that the club's moving around all over in your hands, but you're allowing those wrists to move so you can start to generate some nice amount of space. And when you're ready, just start off with a few nice, easy shots. Just tap them out there, up onto the green. So I really hope you help, uh, this helps. If it does, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with some of your friends who could do with a bit of help with their grip. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing by pressing that uh, subscribe button and the bell. And remember, you do not have to remember a thing. There's a free practice guide in the description box below. So until next week, have a great golfing week.